Yes, we have something rather interesting today. It is Star Force, a boxed collection of, let's see here, uh, <laughs> we've got to put my counting skills to, to work here. We've got seven vehicles uh, that are all knockoffs, in case you couldn't tell. They're all bootlegs of one kind or another, but they're influenced by uh, some fairly iconic vehicles from various science fiction properties. We'll, we'll take a closer look at it in just a minute, but uh, over here on the upper left, you can see it has... A uh, little Knight logo. I'm guessing that that's the company that made these, maybe? Uh, or else they just really like Knights. Uh, who knows? Uh, down at the bottom is... In fact, this is part of the, of the packaging. I thought maybe it was a sticker, but it's not. It says, uh, Fancy It Agencies Limited. So maybe that's the importer. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Fancy It or Fancy IT. It could just be Fancy uh, Information Technology Company. You know, I'm sure that's, that's a possibility. Uh, I got this actually from uh, England, uh, although it's clearly made in China, says so on the front here. We also see it is freewheeling. Actually, what this means is um, the opposite of uh, a pullback toy where you'd, you'd pull it back and there'd be a spring and it would zoom off on its own. This is they have, uh, freewheeling, free, <laughs> free-turning wheels. Tompo printing, those are just... Uh, I mean, it's, it's a little strange that that would be one of their main selling points. But it's, it's just a way of putting on these little um, decals. Also, it says die-cast in plastic. I'm interested to see how much die-cast is actually used in these. I'm guessing not a whole heck of a lot, but we, we shall see. Now, on the back, just has this lovely, lovely illustration of space with a couple of ringed planets and all of the same information again. Clearly, this is kind of a generic package that they might have used for a variety of things, I suppose. So there's no uh, copyright information on any of these, obviously, and there's no dates of any kind on the packaging either. So I'm not really sure when these were made, but um, I did find some references on the internet to some of these models that came from sort of the early 2000s. So these may be 15 or 20 years old, perhaps even older. Uh, either that or they're just continuously putting out the same models, you know, over time. I'm not really sure. Uh, in any case, we are going to go ahead and open this baby up, and we'll see what each one of these is, and what each of them is, have been inspired by. So, uh, you might want to sort of follow along, see if you can tell before I blurt it out, uh, what each of these is inspired by. So I thought we'd start out with one of the more obvious ones. This is, of course, based on an X-Wing. I mean, it's essentially just a, a straight-out copy of an X-Wing, although they did add these uh, these missiles to the bottom wing, which is impressive. Uh, now, the top part here is indeed uh, die-cast metal. You can tell just by feeling it, and you know it looks different as well, at least in person. But the bottom is all plastic, and everything else is plastic as well. They have... Uh, some very prominent wheels on the bottom there, which do more or less function as intended. It rolls. There's some freewheeling toys right here. Uh, the one thing about these uh, things that I discovered when I opened the package is that they, ha they do have an action feature, believe it or not, but it is probably the crappiest action feature I have ever seen on a toy, and that includes uh, things like the spitting Jabba figure, so keep that in mind. Uh, what it has is what appears to be a sort of a shooting missile, right? Where you'd flick a switch in the back and it would shoot out. It'd be fun for the kids, right? Well, unless I'm missing something, which I don't think I am. Uh, the action feature... Well, I'll tell you what, I'll just demonstrate it for you. Ready? There it is! Let's do that again in case you missed it. Yeah, I mean, the entire, the entire feature just consists of this thing moving in and out by about a half a centimeter. Yay! Having fun yet, kids? Uh, you know, this is... I, I suppose this could be a passable toy, actually. I mean, it's a, it's a cool-looking... well, sort of cool-looking spaceship, and you could even pretend that it really was um, an X-Wing. You've even got the little bump here for R2's head, and... All of that. Eh. Not too terrible. But wait, there's more. 
The next one we have, let's see. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go on to the next one here, which is obviously based on uh, Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. Now this one has, as far as I can tell, no die cast on it whatsoever. It's entirely made out of plastic. And I think this one, if not the other one, um, is probably just a direct copy of like a, uh, a Micro Machines type um, model or a, uh, oh, you know, a, a titanium, Hasbro titanium model. I'm not sure. Let me know if you, if you know exactly what model this is a copy of. It looks very familiar to me, uh, except for the, the coloring and, and this business here on the bottom, of course. Now, um, one interesting thing which uh, did not, they did not have on the previous one are these uh, little decals, the Tampo uh, stickers that they were talking about on the package. And it, it even got uh, U.S. and some other, you know, arrows and numbers of mysterious meaning on there. Uh, I, I kind of wonder if they were not using just some pre-made stickers that were made for, like, models, you know, like uh, aircraft or or ship models or something, and they happen to have U.S. in there. But it is a little bit weird to see that on a... Uh, TIE Fighter like this. Now, it also has a um, an action feature. Now, this is <laughs> uh, just as impressive as the last one here. It's got this bizarre... You know, this reminds me a little bit of a... What, like a butterfly's tongue or something sticking out there, but it's got that sticking out all the time, and if you want to use the feature, it gets ever so slightly longer. Good stuff. But, you know, in terms of its uh, overall shape and, and whatnot, and especially the design, except for this tongue thing, uh, very similar to the original um, TIE Fighter design. It does roll, more or less. Oh, wait a minute. No, well, for a second I thought that one, it, it felt like it was going to uh, be a pullback type car, but no, this is also a freewheeler. Eh, doesn't roll particularly well. Next up we have one of the few ones that is not inspired by Star Wars, as far as I can tell. Uh, I believe this one is sort of an amalgam of different designs. This one here, this this front section, really reminds me of a Klingon Bird of Prey from Star Trek. And the back section, I really don't know, it looks kind of like a... Uh, <laughs> just... well, you know what it looks like? It looks a little bit like a mouse droid. But, uh, yeah, I mean... This is a really weird design. I, you got to think, how did they come up with this one? Some of the other ones that I've shown you have just been basically straight up knockoffs, but this one did require some creative thought. Uh, you know, what were they thinking? What were they, they sitting in some boardroom or <laughs> meeting room in China and saying, you know, so what do we make our next uh, vehicles out of? Maybe we'll just take a Klingon bird of prey and attach it to a U-Haul trailer. Wouldn't that be cool? Kids will love that. Oh, and make it purple. But, you know, that's all I can think of. Maybe this is something I don't, I'm don't. i not aware of. Maybe this is an existing design, but I kind of doubt it. Um, it does have the super cool action feature. Let's get a little closer. You ready? Let's get it in focus. There we go. Whew. I don't know if I can take all this excitement. It, uh, it also rolls fairly well. There we go. Not bad. Yeah, this is one of the more bizarre ones. Uh, next up, we have this one. Now, this one is a bit of a mystery to me. I don't know if this is actually based on something specific, or if it's just a, uh, a generic kind of flying saucer design. It does seem to have a bunch of these, I don't know, spires on top, which make me think that it might actually be based on something that I'm not thinking of at the moment, but... Yeah, I, you know, let me know in the comments if you know what this is. But, uh, it does have all those uh, decals and things. We've got uh, what looks to be some kind of a... see if we can zoom in. Some sort of an emblem with eagles and... I don't know, several eagles? It's just eagle after eagle. So many eagles. And U.S. stars. I mean... You know, this is a very American uh, flying saucer, whatever it is. And, you know, this is not without its uh, action feature, although it's it's one of the more... 
the more strange ones. I mean, okay, here it is. Let's push, let's get ready now. Here it is. You got it. That's that's it. I don't even know what these are supposed to be. Are these bumpers? What what the heck? Weird, weird stuff. But it does have wheels. Let's try it out. Yay. Yeah. So that functions. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> my theory about these action feature things is that, uh, especially the ones that shoot, you know, like this one, that look like they should shoot a missile, is that they're maybe intended just to look like they would be an action feature in the package so that they would sort of fool people into buying them. I don't know. I can't, I can't get my mind around this one in particular. Why even bother with this? Next up we have this one here. Now, uh, when my son saw this one, he thought it was based on uh, the ghost from Star Wars Rebels, and I'll admit it does resemble that quite a bit. But um, I'm pretty sure this is actually based on the Narcissus, which is sort of the, I don't know, the smaller ship from the Nostromo in Alien, the movie Alien. Um, they actually made a sort of um, Micro Machines version of this at one point, and I bet you that they just sort of copied that. So I'm a big Alien fan myself, actually, Alien and Aliens, so... That's actually pretty cool. Uh, one of the interesting additions that they have here are these little grabbers that they have on the bottom. I, I rather like that. This is the uh, this is the action feature. You can make the little grabbing arms extend and retract. I guess that's about what. Yeah, one one millimeter. Whew. But they also have added what appear to be missiles on the sides, and of course the. Uh, <laughs> the uh, U.S. stickers here, the uh, the eagles, and here we have rescue and danger on either side. Um, very interesting, very interesting one. Now this one is another one that is die cast, so they're not totally lying when they say it's die cast in plastic, but and it does, it does, it does roll. I'll give it that. You know, in some ways, especially if you don't know about if you didn't know about the original uh, ship design, this this is a credible looking ship, I guess. Next up, we have one that was particularly interesting to me. This is well, I don't know. Let's see if you can tell what it's based on. It shouldn't be too hard. This is in fact based on the speeder bike. Yes, it is extremely extremely out of scale, of course, with the rest of the ships. Um, you know, this looks like you could almost have a three and three fig three and three quarter inch figure right on it. In fact, hold on a second. Here we are. Vader is gonna give it a test drive. Yep, I think that works. Yay! So yeah, this is <laughs> a bit of an unusual one. I don't know if this is based on anything, uh, any specific toy though. I mean, it, it's so stubby and weird looking that I kind of feel like maybe they just made it from scratch, but uh, it's definitely unique. Now in terms of the action feature, I can't quite figure out <laughs> what they were going for here because, it, I mean, it, well, I guess it does go in and out. This is the least impressive one so far. Okay, there it goes. Whoa! But, uh, you know, if you're a big fan of the B Biker Scout or the speeder bike, as I am, I've always liked this, um, this should be interesting to you. Now, this does remind me of something specific, actually, now that I think of it. They, uh, in the 1980s, around the time when uh, Return of the Jedi came out, they actually had sort of a contest where you could win a pedal bike. Or, you know, like a, basically a, oh, a tricycle type of thing, um, a real, a real rideable thing that was based on the uh, speeder bike. And uh, I, I would have loved, you know, at the time, <laughs> I was probably, 
maybe I was getting a little old for it at that time. Boy, that would have been pretty awesome. That's one of those things that uh, I wouldn't mind tracking down even today. They're getting a little expensive, though, from what I understand. So, yeah, there's that one. Now, one more. And this is the reason, actually, that I bought this set. The remaining one is this one right here. Boom. This is, in fact, based on Java's sail barge, as you can probably tell. I don't, to my knowledge, I don't think this is based on anything specific. It's not uh, based on any, like, particular toy. And that's what confused me at first. When, when I saw these online, and on eBay I bought these, um, I assumed that these would be much smaller, maybe like yay big, about the same size as some of the other models that I have of the sail barge. But no, this is really quite a decent size. Now, let's take a look here on the sails. We have, we have all of the, um, all of the Tampo decals here, including US, the, uh, the crest here with the eagle 28 for some reason, I don't know what that means. And some stars and arrows and things. It's <laughs> really quite interesting. Uh, this also does have the action feature. I don't want to ruin it for you here. Look on. There we go. Ready? Wow. Cool stuff. Interestingly enough, uh, Lego did introduce a very similar action feature to this uh, that actually does shoot a projectile in their uh, newest version of the sail barge set, which I will be covering at some point, hopefully in the not too distant future. But uh, yeah, this is this is really quite interesting uh, that they would show, first of all, choose this as one of their models to base it on and, you know, just to, to do it this way. I'm a little surprised actually that they went with the brown and gold because that actually seems almost appropriate. <laughs> you know, maybe they should have gone with purple or pink or something like that just to make it fully uh, psychedelic. Let's see if it rolls. Ready? More or less. You know, take a look at this for a second. It seems to sort of go up and down. I think that's because this axle here is actually bent. It doesn't roll properly. Quality control! Hooray! So there you have it. And here we have them all together at last, and it's quite a motley crew. Uh, to me, though, what's interesting about bootlegs and knockoffs like this is the fact that, um, you know, they're just so bizarre in many cases. Things like the uh, bootleg Lego minifigures that I made videos about um, a little while ago are interesting, but um, they're almost too, too good quality. You know, they're, they're almost indistinguishable from the real thing, which is... Not that much fun, but when you have something like, you know, Java's sail barge with wheels and US on the top and a ridiculous action feature, uh, that's that's a lot of fun, you know? Uh, I don't know how much fun it would be for kids actually playing with them, but uh, for a collector like me, this is, uh, this is definitely worth looking into. Um, I will be putting this guy in my case of uh, sort of Java related uh, items. I, well, I've got more than one case to be honest with you, but uh, I have a case where I have some of the other uh, sail barge models in particular and that'll go very well with that. I hope you enjoyed this look at some bootleg vehicle toys and uh, you know let me know if you'd be interested in seeing some more things like this in the future. Thanks for watching!